the way episode four ended wasn't exactly clear. I understand episode four better in the context of episode five. So I, yeah. uh, to be honest, I think we've been pretty clear that there's there's a pretty low bar for the sense of consequence. So I never felt that Ahsoka had died. Yeah. But after seeing episode five, I was like, okay, so she was supposed to have died falling off the cliff. That I get that now. Um, but episode four ends, just to seal this off real quick, um, <clears throat> with Ray Stevenson, or Balon Skull, uh, uh, Shin Hatai, and Sabine all going up into the, I think, the Eye of Scion, I think they call it. Um, oh, they, yeah. The super hyperdrive equipped ship, uh, which has now set its coordinates, and they shoot off into this galaxy. Zoom! And, and the, this uh, hyperspace yeah. jump is so powerful that it knocks all these ships, kind of like, destroys some of the X-Wings and everything. Yeah. So as episode four ended, um, my sense, it was the first time that I got a sense that there was some world building occurring where I was like, okay, so they're, they're going to this other galaxy. Mm -hmm. They're gone. So I, it was the first, I had enjoyed the lightsaber battle. Ahsoka lost. We didn't get a Mary Sue situation. And uh, Sabine surrendered, which made me more endeared to her. Um, and the bad guys seemed to be in charge at the end of episode four, which I enjoyed. And then they jumped off into this other galaxy, and it was the first time that I sensed that they were gonna that they were gonna restructure something that Star Wars could actually move forward um, in a new way. I was like, this could be new. This this could reset Star Wars possibly very very well. Mm -hmm. How they did it, what it all meant, I had really no clue at the end of Episode Four, uh, and I wasn't. I, I was slightly excited to see Episode Five, more so than I had been in previous episodes. Um, and then, of course, we jump in. Oh, and then it ends with Anakin Skywalker in that in that setting. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And I didn't understand who that was supposed to be. You, right. And, and of course, I'll, at the social media, at the time, look, he, he did not look like Anakin Skywalker to me. Maybe he, <laughs> apparently to other people. Like, I, yeah, I not, yeah. like if you if you but I'm saying this in this is not a joke. Like if I had not heard that he was coming back and you gave me that character, you said, who is that? I, you might be clued in by the, the costume. But I didn't know who that was. Wow. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. like, to me, because then, then later, like you look the same. I was like, "That's what Anakin Skywalker is supposed to look like." I did. I was questioning that. Yeah, oh, I okay. think the initial the initial image of Anakin. Mannequin Skywalker. They did Mannequin Skywalker <laughs> exactly. They went a little too far with the digital work. Uh, if you look at the the side by side with Anakin and um, it, from uh, the prequels, and you look at him in that one uh, shot, his nose is a completely different person's nose. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's That's, totally, it's not wow. his nose at all. I'm okay with that, too, James, coming in. Just, I'm just saying that I got clued in. Because, like, First of all, I had heard that Anakin was coming back before I watched that, but when I, before I watched it. And then there is his costume. You know, he's the Jedi who flaunts the dress code. We talked about that. So he's got a very distinct <laughs> costume. But I'm not sure that looking at that guy that, but, uh, you know, that's that's a different thing than storytelling or whatever. Like, he looks, to me, he looked very artificial. He yeah. looked really artificial. Standing. But I, I guess I'll say, I knew it was Anakin, but um, they have done some poor de-aging in general. You know, and, and it seems like no one's quite solved it yet. So it didn't bother me too much. Um, I just didn't know where they were going to go with it. I was more like, okay, what are we going to do with Anakin yeah. you know, going forward? Yeah. Um, yeah. But... In episode four, they, they, I think it was, it was barely, he, he looked like Anakin, but there was some differences, but by episode five, they, they let a little bit more of Anakin, uh, of Hayden Christensen's face actually shine more yeah. in a lot of the scenes. So you could actually tell it was him. Um, and so that that made it a lot easier. But that initial uh, visual of him is just so artificial, and yeah. uh, they did they overcompensated, I think, uh, for any like flaws or anything. Yeah, um, and I think it's it, the contrast there is drawn even stronger by the fact that they did a better job in episode five. So after watching episode five and looking back at the end of episode four, you're like, oh. Yeah, there you are. The learning curve here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I had a friend who who messaged me after uh, watching episode four, and oh. he said um, he said I can't decide if I like Ahsoka after or not after episode four. 
Its writing is all over the place. It has brief moments of clarity and otherwise endless soup of boring. Let's just put it this way. The stinger ending of episode four makes it clear one of two things is about to happen. This is before five was released. One of two things is going to happen. The show immediately falls apart in episode five, or it does something ill-advised but interesting. <laughs> well, I think there's more, there's a wider range on the spectrum than just those two, but those two are on that spectrum. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I can't argue with them. Like, like I, I agree with most of the criticism. I, there's a lot of the show I won't defend and will be openly judge. Like I will judge it poorly because it is, they have not done a good job. Um, episode four gained strength for me for all the reasons we've discussed tonight so far. Balon Skull, better lightsaber battles, um, uh, an ending that at least to me suggested significant change for Star Wars. And I have never felt that um, before. Um, and I also felt that there was an attempt to build up to something and I did not get that with the uneven storytelling before this. Um, and then, of course, episode five happened. And well, well, my wait, wait, opinion... I've been trying to get an answer. A, a, okay. A, a question on this. So this is well, what you show up in is something called the world between worlds. That apparently, mm -hmm. you know, if you've been watching Rebels. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That if you're not watching that, you don't know where you are. Correct. And what's going on. So Correct. what is this? What am I looking at? Who Who has watched Rebels and knows what this is that we're looking at? It's like a. it's a it's a, like a purgatory place it it's like nowhere it's like when uh it's not quite heaven it's not quite it's not earth it's just a plane in which nothing uh there there isn't anything there but you can go to other points in time if you want to the past exists. Like, there's some hint of the future there yeah it's it's an imaginary plane but it's it's it really exists <laughs> In Star Wars, I, yeah, I it's kind of a it's like an interdimensional space. Right. Yes, yes, that's the best way to to describe it. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was it? Doug? Say, say that again. It's kind of like an interdimensional space where future, past, and present coexist, where you can observe, hear, re-experience events that have happened in the past. Uh, it is a place that Force users can and attempt to get into. Uh, there's also the rebels ended with the emperor attempting to blunt, you know, brute force his way into the world between worlds um, and uh, failed, which was significant. It was actually a, an interesting thread. Um, Ahsoka was fighting Darth Vader at one point and was about yeah. to be killed in rebels mm -hmm. by Darth Vader in Darth Vader gear. And Ezra Bridger pulls her out of that battle into the world between worlds. And they have a very significant discussion there. Um, almost like there, it, there's a certain existential quality to the world between worlds. Um, I mean, how else would you describe it, Retro? I mean, it's just kind yeah, of... Uh, I would call it a purgatory, time-dimensional <laughs> uh, place. And and it acted a little bit weird this time. It didn't act like it, it did in previous there were no episodes. Portal. Yeah, there were no portals to go in anywhere in time, but he did kind of take her along like these, uh, you know, little pockets of memory that she mm -hmm. had. And uh, we likened it to kind of, uh, you know, a Christmas carol where you have the ghost <laughs> of Christmas carol take you on different spots in time. So that that's kind of uh, that I kind of I kind of like that part. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> I, All right, like bouncing around in different times, but that place is is just a plane that is not see. It's not visible to anyone except for like force users that are, um, like Ahsoka. I think she's the only one, and uh, Ezra was there. Ezra and Anakin. And uh, Anakin and was there, yeah. Um. So right. So uh, there's not a lot of context. For people coming into the show uh, without the animated series. It's also called a, a force plane. Yeah, I like that word that Retro used, plane. We consider collective memory the will yeah, of force. But, it, but you can affect the outcome of events. That's a key thing. And uh, to be perfectly honest, might as well address this 